Okay, we're going to continue working on radicals. And what we're going to do, what I'm looking for first, is for you to put these into simplest form in radical form, okay? One of the things you can, can do is put this in the calculator and get the decimal answer, and we're going to kind of talk about that in a minute. Um, so first off, on number 40, on square root of 42, <clears throat> what we're going to do is you're going to try and split it up doing a factor tree. What numbers multiply together to give you 42? 6 and 7, okay? 7 is prime, so that's as low as it goes. So now I have to break up 6. 6 goes, yeah, 3 and 2, 2 and 3, whatever. So now underneath this square root sign is 7 times 3 times 2. All right. The only way you get to come out of the house is if you have a friend to go play with outside. And your friend has to be just like you. There's none that are just the same. So the, the simplest that this can go, it stays at the square root of 42. There's nothing we can do on this one. Now, let's talk about estimating. On estimating, trying to figure out what the decimal is closest to. Let's think about our perfect squares. Okay? I'm going to go over here. Perfect squares. And you have the back of your paper to write on. The square root of 1. What multiplies together to give you 1 is, oh, hold on, let's go back. Instead of doing the square root of 1, I'm going to do this. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared, remember, is 2 times 2 is 4. 3 squared, 9. 3 times 3. 4 squared, 16. 5 squared, 25. Now, there's a reason I'm going to write all this out. 6 squared means 6 times 6, 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared, 64. 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100. 11 squared, 11 times 11 is 121. 12 squared is 144. We'll just kind of stop with that one right now. Now, the problem we were just doing was the square root of 42. How could we estimate, if I estimated what the square root of that is, I'm going to look at my perfect squares. Where does 42 fit in between these? It's between 6 and 7. So if I had to make an estimate, I would say that the square root of 42 is 6 point something. Maybe I'll say, does it look like it's about halfway in between, isn't it? So I'm going to go with 6.5. It's halfway in between 36 and 49. Okay, so let me go back to the other page real quick. And I said that it was about 6.5. So we're going to write... First off, you're going to fill out your answers to get this part. I want to see this. Then you're going to give me the estimate. Then we're going to get our exact answer. Now, to get our exact answers, when we're going to go to the calculator, our handy-dandy calculator, So the next thing you're going to do on this paper is go second. The square root button is right there with the x squared. Put in there 42 and press enter. Square root of 42 is 6.48. Wasn't too far out. So I'm going to put 6.48 as the exact. Okay, so we're going to go over the steps of what we're going to need to do today. We're going to give an estimate, and then we're going to get the exact answer. So if I go up here and I see 64, you should be able to identify that, that that's a perfect square, right? Because right here, 64 is 8 times 8. Square root of 
square root of 64 is just 8. Now, if it's a perfect square, I don't need you to do the estimate and stuff. And it, it may be on some, if you don't know your perfect, well, you should. You have them written down. But remember, you can still look uh, on the handy-dandy calculator. Hello. There we go. Second x squared, 64. And press Enter. And it'll give you 8. Okay, 120 is not a perfect square, so we're going to go and break this up. We can do 10 times 12, so let's do that, and you don't, you don't have to do it just this way. It's just the ones I choose, the numbers I choose right now. 10 splits up is 2 and 5. Those are prime. That's as low as it goes. 12 breaks up into 6 and 2. 2 is prime again. 6, i got to break it up again. 2 and 3. So I'm going to have, I'm going to build my house here. When it's got a lot of numbers like this, I would do something to make sure you don't forget them. I've got 2 and 5. So let's see, 2 times 5. Next one's 2 and 3. Times 2 times 3. And then times 2. Okay, I've got all my numbers now. Let's find my partners. Two has a buddy. So two gets to go outside and play. The rest have to stay inside. Well, that's five, that's three, and two. So now to simplify it, two still stays outside. Well, five times three is 15. 15 times two is 30. So your answer up here is 2 square root of 30. Okay? The next thing you have to do is estimate an answer. We have to look and figure out what do you think 120 is, the square root of 120. If I go over to my perfect squares, where does 120 fall? Between 100 and 121. It's really close to 121. So it's got to be something close to 11. I'll guess 11.9. No, I lied. That would be almost 12, wouldn't it? Try 10.9. Right? Because 120, it's not up to 121. At 121, the square root is 11. So it's got to be a little bit less than 11. So now go to the handy-dandy calculator. And put in there the square root of 120. And press enter. Did I put too many zero? No, I didn't. Okay. 10.95. So the exact is 10.95. Okay. Right now, go with these and try and do these three the same way. Break them up into the factor trees, then estimate, and then find the exact. Okay, looking at 150. <clears throat> I'm looking at this, and I'm going to break it up into 15 and 10. Again, there's other ways to break it up. It just matters what we get at the end. 15 splits up as 3 and 5. Those are prime numbers. That's as low as it goes. 10 splits up as 2 and 5. Now, I build the house. I have 3 times 5 times 2 times 5. The only ones that get to come out are the ones with partners. I've got 5s. So I have 5. Then square root, 2 times 3 is 6. So simplest form in radicals is 5 square root of 6. Now I said the next thing you needed to do was get an estimate. Okay, so 150. If you look back and think about perfect squares, 144, 150 is a little bit bigger. What's 13 squared? What's 13 times 13? Help me out so I don't have to use my calculator right now. 169. Okay, so 150 goes in between here. 
Is it closer to 12 or 13? 12. So I'm going to go with, and again, the estimate's not going to be wrong. As long, well, it could be if you chose like 6. I mean, but if it's somewhere in between 12 and 13, so I'm going to put 12.2. Let's see what the calculator says. So the exact, I'll go in here, pull this up, and go get rid of the writing part. Square root of 150. 12.247. Oh, that was very close. Okay. So I'm going to have 12.24. And you're just trying to see. We're just practicing on being able to estimate it. All right. So number five that you should have done. 32 splits up as 4 and 8. 4 splits up as 2 and 2. 8 splits up as 4 and 2. Again, 4 splits up as 2 and 2. Okay, my square roots, 2, uh, let's see, 2 and times 2. And then I have 3 more of them, right? 1, 2, 3. So times 2, times 2, times 2. All right, you have to have a partner to come outside to play. There's a pair of twos. There's a pair of twos. What's left? A square root of two. Outside here. Since there were two pairs out here, two times two is four. So the answer is four square root of two. Now, again, the next thing I told you to do is get an estimate. 32. Hopefully you can start doing this without thinking here, but 32 is in between 25 and 36. It's almost, oh, let's see, it's four away from that. It's seven away from that. It's a little bit closer to six. So I'm going to go with 5.6. And then let's do the exact. So the exact. I'm going to press second, the square root sign, and put in there 32. It is 5.65. Man, I'm on a roll here. 5.65. The next one you were supposed to do, 45. So I'm going to split this up, oh gosh, 9 and 5. Let's go with that. Five's prime, so I don't have to do anything. Nine splits up as three and three. My square root sign, three times three times five. Oh, I have some buddies here. The threes get to go outside and play. The five has to stay inside and do the dishes. Okay? So the answer is three square root of five. And if that was my son, square root of five, he'd be crying and whining and saying life isn't fair. Okay. Oh, sorry. Was I just going back to my life? Here we go. All right. The estimation. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, where's the date calculator? All right. Here we go. Do the square root of 45. Oh, I didn't want to do that yet. What am I doing? Don't look at that. I don't want to see the answer. All right. My estimate, 45, is closest. It's in between 36 and 49. What is it closer to? Is it closer to 49 or 36? It's closer to 49. So, wait, now I forgot the number. What was it? 45? Okay, 45 is four away from that. But it's 9 away from that. So it's got to be more than 6.5. Um, we'll go with 6.7. And no, I don't remember what it was because I'm old and senile. So even though I saw it, I don't remember it. All right. So the exact that we already put in the calculator, it said 6. Point. You're like, yeah, right. You didn't remember it. I'm just, I didn't. All right. So it's 6.70, I'll leave it as 
Okay. Here's the next three. Try those the same way. I want the radical form. I want the estimate and the exact form. All right, the next three. 54. 54 is 9 and 6. <clears throat> 9 breaks up as 3 and 3. 6 breaks up as 3 and 2. Underneath the square root sign, 3, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 3 3's, and 1, 2. The only one, there's one pair right here that can come out and play. That's 3, and what's left underneath there is 2 times 3, which is 6. So my simplified form is 3 square root of 6. If you saw from the beginning right here, you would see that 9 is a perfect square. And you can take that 9, and that's where the 3 comes from, by taking the square root of 9. And then writing what's left, Jose. Next, we uh, want the estimate 54. What is 54 in between? Well, 54 is in between 49 and 64. It's closer to 7 than it is to 8. So I'm going to guess 7.4. The actual... Let's see, square root of 54, square root 54, maybe it's not working. Why is my friend not working? There we go. No, that would not be it. Square root of 54, press enter. 7.34. I wasn't too far off. 7.34. Okay, 64, the square root of 64. That's a perfect square, isn't it? 8 times 8 is 64. That's as far as we're going to go. That's the estimate. That's the actual. Next, we have 72. 72 is 9 times 8. For those of you seeing the perfect square, hint, hint, Jose, 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3. That would go outside there. 8 would break up into 4 and 2. 4 is a perfect square. That means that the 2 would go outside. Well, this 2 is a loner. It's all by itself. It goes back inside the house. 2 times 3 is 6, square root of 2. Again, you can continue to break up the 4 and the 9 and get your 3s and the 4 for the 2s. But if you see that they're the perfect squares, you can pull them out. Now my estimate, square root of 72. Well, 72 goes in between here between 64 and 81. Let's see, it, 72 is 6, 7, 8, 8 away from this one, and 9 away. It's very close to being in the middle. So I'm going to go with 8.5 as my estimate. And let's see how close I am. So I go here, square root of... What was it again? 72. Enter. Dang, I'm good. 8.48. Very close. It's because I'm a math teacher. I just think it's because I'm a genius. Ha <laughs> ha All right. Next three. Try the next three if you haven't already. Okay, so on for the square root of 80, we're going to go through and do try and simplify into radical into the terms with the square roots. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to split up 80 
80, I know, splits up as 8 and 10. Then I can split it up as 4 and 2. Let me keep going. The 4 splits up as 2 and 2. So those are all prime. Now the 10. The 10 splits up as 2 and 5. Okay, so I have all these prime numbers right here. I'm going to put them inside the house. So I have 2 and 2. And a lot of times I uh, put some kind of check mark to make sure I don't leave them off. There's the other 2 and then a 2 and a 5. Okay. Now, you have to have a partner to come out and play. Okay, so these 2s, they have a partner. They get to come outside. These 2s, there's two twos, and so they come out and play. Now the 5 has to stay inside and do the laundry, okay? And if it's my kid, then they're crying about how life's not fair. 2 times 2, you on the outside, you're going to multiply these together, and so you have 4 square root of 5. That's as simple as it goes. So your answer is 4 square root of 5. That's the first part you're going to do. The next part, we're going to estimate what we actually think the decimal is. Now, when we went through, remember that eight, let's think about our perfect squares. Let me go back here. All right, my perfect squares, I'm looking for 80. 80 fits right here in between 64 and 81, right? Very close to 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. Well, it can't be 9, so it's going to be 8 point something. Since it's so close to 9, I'm going to guess that it's 8.9. So my estimate is going to be 8.9. You're going to try and guess and figure it out what it is from your perfect squares. Then you're going to find your actual. And this is how you're actually going to double, double check and make sure that you reduced your square root um, into simplest terms. So first we're going to go to the calculator. And we're first going to go second, the x squared, put in 80, and press enter. It's 8.94, so I did a good job of guessing. It's 8, oh, I'm writing with the mouse, all right, 0.94. Okay, now let's see if we did this right. This is what I think I got for my answer, so let's put that in the handy-dandy calculator. So I'm going to come over here and put 4 square root 5 and press enter. You should get the same thing as the square root of 80. So if these match up, that means we reduce this correctly. Let's try this next one. Okay, we're going to start with 96. The first thing you're going to do is try and break it up. So... Well, sometimes when they get larger, you have to start thinking, and maybe you need to guess in the calculator. Put 96 divided by 2, 96 divided by 3. I mean, go through like that if you can't think what it is. Now, I know it's an even number. Even numbers, 2 always goes into it. You can take 96 divided by 2, and you'll get 48. 2 is in lowest terms. That's great. I see that this is an even number. If I can't think of anything, I can split it up as 2 and take 48 divided by 2. That gives me 24. If I go with the same theory of 2s, 24 is 2 and 12. 12 splits up as 2 and 6. 6 splits up as 2 and 3. So... There's a lot of numbers. Let me try and underline my prime numbers so I don't forget some of them. So inside the house, I've got a 2. I've got another 2. Another 2. Another 2. And then I've got 2 and 3. Okay. Now... I've got a pair of twos, they get to come out and play. A pair of twos, 
They get to come out and play. Now, who's stuck inside? Two and three is stuck inside right now. So now we need to multiply these to be able to put it together. Two times two is four. Then underneath the square root sign, two times three is six. So we get four the square root of six. Okay, now we need to estimate. So my estimating, let's see here. Now let me remind what I'm talking about. When we're talking about perfect squares, one squared is one times one, that's one. Two squared is two times two is four. Three squared is nine. Four squared is 16. Five squared is 25. Six squared is 36. Seven squared is 49. Eight squared is 64, just to help this class see where I'm getting my numbers from. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared, 11 times 11 is 121. 12 squared is 144. We can go on to 13 squared, but I won't mess with that right now. Okay, so we want 96. 96 goes in between 81 and 100. It's closer to 100. So it's going to be 9 point something, something that's closer to 10. So I'm going to guess, wrong way, go the other way here. I'm going to guess 9.8. Why am I guessing 9.8? I don't know. I'm literally, I'm really just guessing. I don't know what they are. Now the actual. So we're going to go in our calculator. And you're going to go second x squared and put in there 96. And press enter. 9.79, that's pretty darn close, 9.79. Now, we want to make sure that we reduce ours right, so we're going to press 4, square root, 6, and press enter. They are the same, that means I did it right. That's how you're going to check and make sure you did it correctly. Let's do this next one. 132. Again, I'm not quite sure what it is. I know it's even, so I know a 2 goes into it. 132 divided by 2 mm, would be 66. 66, well, let's see, let me go with 2. 66 divided by 2 would be 33. 33 would split up into 3 and 11. All of these are prime. There's my prime numbers. So now underneath the house, I have 2 times 2 times 3 times 11. Well, the 2s have partners so they can go outside and play. Inside the house is the 3 times 11, which means I will have 2 square root of 33. So my answer is 2 square root of 33. Now I need to try and find, I want you guys to try and find your estimate. Okay, 132. I'm going to go back over, not there, try again. 132 is in between 121 and 144. Well, let's see, 132. It's about almost in the middle between the two numbers. So I'm going to go with 11.5. If you're wrong on your estimate, that's okay. But I'm trying to get you guys to start reasoning what you think a reasonable answer is. The actual. What was my number again? 132. So I'm going to go set. Oh, let me clear it just so it's better to see. Second x squared. 132. Enter. 11.48, sure was close. Now let's make sure that we got our answer right. 2, square root, 33, enter. They are the same, I got those right.
Okay, let's go to the next problems. Right here. Take a minute and do 13 through 15 the same way. George, oh. Yep. George, hurry up and go. The AP office. So go to the front desk, or go past the front of the school. Go down that hallway. Second door on your right. No. Forty nine. Mm -hmm. Go get a calculator. When they all wet, then you just take those numbers and multiply them together, and that's it. All right. Here, just put the number. There's nothing inside the square root sign. Right, you can't just put it in the calculator. I don't want the decimals. Yes, you did. The way it was on the sheet. How was it on the sheet? And you can do that. I've just built into it. Yes. And that's fine. Actually, Jason, that's what I want you to find is the perfect squares and just pull the perfect squares out. That's better. All right, hopefully y'all like that entertainment talking to the class. Here we go. 196, splitting it up. Okay, I know it's even. I'm going to go with the 2. What's 196 divided by 2? 98. Well, that divided by 2, 49. 49 is 7 and 7. So now underneath the square root sign, 2 times 2 times 7 times 7. Well, you have pairs. The 2s get to go outside and play. The 7s get to go outside and play. 
and there's nothing left, in, no one's left in the house. So the house just goes away. So 2 times 7 is 14. Well, put in the calculator, because I'm not even going to estimate. It's a whole, it's a whole number. It's a, it's a perfect square. When you go over here and put in the calculator, second x squared, and put in there 196, enter, it's 14. So that, the square, so let's see, let me go back here. I left off at 13. So I know 14 squared is, what is it now? Well, I know it's 196, so I'm just going to leave it on my list here. The next one is 8. 8 splits up as 4 and 2, and like we were talking about with Jason, is that if you see that this is a perfect square, just take that outside and it's a 2, and then you're left with the square root of 2. Or you can keep with the way I do it by just writing them all in the house and finding the pairs, right? Where you're splitting up the two, the 4 to 2 and 2. Inside the house, 2 times 2 times 2. There's your partners. Come outside. So my answer is 2 square root of 2. Now, my estimate, um, where is it? I got to go back. What, you talking about multiplying 2 times 2? No, because these pairs have to go out. They make 1 to go outside. Okay, so now 8, 8 is really close to 9, which is the square root of 9 is 3. So this is, I'm going to guess 2.9. So when I go to the calculator, put in there the square root of 8. Sure enough, well, I wasn't, I was a little bit off. Let's see, I'm going to move this up here. The actual, what did it say, 2.8? 2, trying to write with the mouse, 0.82. Okay. Now let's check and go 2 square root of 2 and make sure it gives us the same answer. Sure does, so we know that we're right. The next one. Splitting up 225. Hmm. I know a 5 goes into it because it ends with a 5. A 45? Okay. 45 is 9 and 5. 9 is 3 and 3. Now, Jason, again, if you saw, if you had like a 25 and a 9 and you saw that, then you could do that, the perfect squares like that. But I see 5 times 3 times 3 times 5. All right. So, yes, ma'am. If you can just go down to the perfect square and stop there, that's fine. Yes. Wait, 2, 2, 5, what? Yes, yes, yes. I see what you're saying. Yes. So, that is a 3. That goes outside the house. And the fives go outside. Nothing's left inside the house. So the answer is just 15. Because when I go to do the square root of 225, it is a perfect square. It's 15. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to add it to my list. Okay. All right, let's try these next ones. Let me remember to pause the video this time. All right, 125. 125, it ends with a 5, so I know it's a 5 divides into it. Take 125 divided by 5. Um, what is that? 20. Isn't that 25? Okay. You can see that that's a perfect square if you want to, to figure it out this way. I'll go ahead and write it down into my prime numbers. Inside my house, 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, here are the partners. It takes two of them to get out, to break out of jail. So it takes two of them. So the 5 comes outside. 
And what's left is the square root of 5. So my answer is 5 square root of 5. Now my estimate. 125. Let's see. 125 is between 11 and 12. Okay. So somebody said, well, are you telling me what you actually know? Okay. We're going to guess 11.3. And our actual... So when I go to the calculator, I'm going to put in there the square root of 125. It says 11.18. So 11.18, which is fine. We're just trying to guess, and we're trying to guess between the numbers. So now let's check if our answer is right. 5, square root of 5, enter. They are the same. That means we're right. So now 200. I'll show you how to do this with a perfect square. One of the ways with 200, I've got 2 and I've got 100. 100 is a perfect square. What's the square root of 100? 10. So the 10 is going to go on the outside. 2 is left on the inside. You can do it that way if you see the perfect squares. Otherwise, you can keep writing it down. So I've got 2 square root of 2. I'm sorry, 10 square root of 2. My estimate, 200. Well, I know it's more than 144. Let's see. Oh, here we go. It's in between 196 and 225. 14.2. So we'll go over here and say maybe, let's see if it's 14.2. Trying... I'm going to learn how to write with this mouse before the end of the year. Well, maybe not that fast. All right. So I have the square root of 200. Enter. 14.14. I do have my board thing, but sometimes it's easier with the calculator to use the mouse. Now I'm going to test. I've got 10 square root of 2 and press enter. Sure enough, it means it's the right answer. So now we'll go over here to 20. I've got 2 and I've got 10. 10 splits up as 2 and 5. Inside my house is 2 and 2 and 5. There's the partners in crime, the 2. There's two twos. They get to break out of jail. So you have 2 square root of 5. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to use my estimate and figure out my actual. 20. Now let's 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. So it's in between those two. I'm going to go with 4.5. So if I go here, let me clear this out. I've got the square root of... 20, 4.47. Okay, so let's test and make sure that I um, simplified it correctly. I've got 2 square root of 5. Press enter. Sure enough, they're the same. Now, right now, we have... 19 through 21. I want you to do 19 through 21. The square root of 18. Square root of 18 splits up as 2 and 9. Now, if you see this, 9 is a perfect square. What's the square root of 9? 3. So the 3 comes out and the 2 is left in. So you have 3 square root of 2. Now my estimate, 18, let's see, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, so it's in between 4 and 5. So I'm going to say 4 point, let's see, what is it, six, closer to 16, 4.3. So now my calculator. I'm going to come over here and put the square root of 18. 
Press enter. 4.24, not too bad. 4.24. Now let's see if I did my simplifying right. Two, uh, 3 square root of 2. Enter. Sure is the same, so that means I'm right. 15. When you go to break up 15, it becomes 3 and 5. Well, there are no pairs here when you're underneath the house. So it stays square root of 15. That's as low as it goes. Now my estimate, it's very close to 16. 16 is the square root of 4. So I'm going to think that it's 3.9. In actuality, the square root of 15 is 3.87, which is still very close. Now on this right here on 24, 24 is going to split up, let's go 2 and 12. 12 splits up as 2 and 6. 6 splits up as 2 and 3. So in my house, 2 and 2 and 2 and 3. There's a pair of 2's. That comes out. There is no other pairs. 2 times 3 is 6. That stays inside. So I have 2 square root of 6. 24 is very close to 25. And what's the square root of 25? 5. So I will say 4.9 or 4.8. The actual, when I go here, I do the square root of 24. It is 4.89. Now let's check and see if I did it right. 2 square root of 6 and press enter. They are the same number, so that means I got it right. So this was 4.8 something. Now, the sheet that you have in front of you, turn it over because I want to add something to it. What we have not added to this is variables. So, for example, if I had the square root of 25m squared, okay? Well, 25 is really 5 times 5, right? What is m squared? m times m. What did I tell you that it takes to get out of the house? A pair, right? So... This is a pair, and it gets to get out of the house. This is a pair, and it comes out of the house. There's nothing left in there, so the square root of this is 5m. Now, let me give you another example. What if I did 36m to the third? 36 is actually a perfect square, but it goes 6 and 6, right? M is 1, M to the third power is M, M, and M. You only can come out if you have a partner. 6 can come out. One set of M's can come out. What's left? An, a square root of M that stays inside there. This would be your answer. You cannot check that on your calculator. Okay, we'll add some more of these on there tomorrow with what we're going to do on the next lesson.